All right, today is the day to get a quick crash course on the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagoras was a Greek philosopher that lived in the 6th century BC. You can learn all about him if you download my song, Pythagoras, by Megamath. Anyway, Pythagorean theorem can be seen in at least a couple of different ways. One is showing that you understand the square of the legs of a right triangle are equal to the square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So the L's in this case stand for legs, H stands for hypotenuse, the legs are the two shortest sides, the hypotenuse is the longest side which is opposite of the right angle, opposite of the 90 degree angle. Okay. You can also see this theorem, this equation, as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This only works for right triangles, so please don't use this for scalene or equilateral triangles in an attempt to find a missing side. There are other methods for doing those types of problems. Today we're focusing only on right triangles. That's where Pythagoras dominated in ancient Greece. Okay, this works to find a missing leg, a missing hypotenuse, and it also works as a proof or a test to see if three numbers would make a right triangle. First, I'm going to teach you how to find a missing hypotenuse. Step one, it always works good to just write the equation. Now we're going to use substitution. Okay, that's a leg. That's a leg, the two shorter sides. The hypotenuse is always opposite of the 90 degree angle. Okay, so here we've got a leg of 7, a leg of 24, and the unknown. We'll just substitute x for c. Okay, 7 squared is 49, 24 squared. What is that? 576. Now we're going to add 49 and 576 together. Then we need to find the root. Okay, both of these are squares. I need to find the root. What that means is, for example, I've got a square with an area of 625. The root is right here. The root are the dimensions or the measurements of the square. So the root is that number which I need to multiply to get the 625. On the calculator, what that means is working backwards. In this case, it's 25. That means 25 times 25 is 625. That's how square roots work. So speaking of which, you could also, you could download that song. There's a square root song. Yep. Okay, enough advertising for one day. Anyway, the bottom line is, that's how you find the missing hypotenuse. Okay, substitute, add, find the root, done. Here is another thing you can do with the Pythagorean theorem. We can find a missing leg. Okay, so once again, it never hurts to just write it down. Then we can substitute and do A, B, C. It doesn't matter which order you go in. Order does not matter for the legs. Okay, it Definitely matters for hypotenuse. It has to go over there. Don't switch that around ever. So here I've got 5 squared plus x squared equals 13 squared. The only thing different about the missing hypotenuse versus a missing leg problem is that I substituted into a different spot here. I'm missing this thing, which is going to change something in just a moment. At this point, I need to use the algebra inverse operations to isolate the variable. So I need to subtract the 25 from both sides. 
And you can see that's where it's different from finding the missing hypotenuse. Now I'm going to find the root of 144, which if you remember your uh, squares, your multiplication tables, that of course is 12. And that's our missing leg. Okay. Leave that there for a moment. Next, if I want to just test three numbers and see if they can make a right triangle, teachers will often do this when they're making up a test or some problems. They want to make sure that what they give you actually works. So, for example, how about three, four, and five? First, you need to be able to identify the legs and the hypotenuse. Then the test is you square the legs and the hypotenuse, and you see if it's true. Of course, this one's true. We've all seen a 3-4-5 triangle before. But let's try something that's maybe not so obvious to the naked eye. Let's do... Uh, 11, 7, and 18. Sometimes the numbers you get are out of order. You need to know how to identify legs and hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always the longest one. Okay, So even though 7 and 11 are out of order, those are legs because they're both the short ones. Then we just substitute Pythagorean theorem. I don't know, 18 squared off the top of my head. I'm going to use a calculator. 324. And you can tell this one is a no. So if you're going to do a test or a proof for a right triangle, which is also great when you're finished with one of these problems, to go ahead and run the proof and make sure your answer is correct. It's a good way to double check your work. Otherwise, you're just comparing what's on the left and right of the equal sign and deciding if they're equal or not. Yes means it's a right triangle. No means it is not a right triangle. There we go. Here are a few practice problems. I'm going to put these up on the screen for you. Let me zoom out so you can see everything. There we go. So I've got four triangle problems here for you. They're all right triangles. And I've got three proofs for you to do at the bottom. Just pause the video here, copy the problems down, use your notes to finish them, and then hit play again and check your work. Okay, I'll do it right along with you. All right, hopefully you got done there. And I'm going to work through these with you very quickly. This one is a uh, hypotenuse, here's a missing leg, this is a missing leg, and this is a missing hypotenuse. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to capture the crazy action. All right, Pythagorean theorem, substitution, calculator. All we're doing is squaring, which means the number times itself. Add them together. Find the root. C was 35. Did you get 35? Yes! Nice job. Next, it's a missing leg, so it's going to look a little different. Once again, I'll start with a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, I'm going to call x my missing leg, b is my other leg, and 30 is the hypotenuse. Square the numbers. Subtract to isolate the unknown the variable. X is the root of 500. 500 is the area of a square. The dimensions of that square are 
about that. I rounded to the nearest tenth. That's that. Here's another one with a missing leg. Substitution. Complete the squares. And find the root of 7,048. I'm just going to round that off to 84. It's about 83 and 95 hundredths, so that's close enough to 84. Does that seem right to you? What did I do wrong here? I did something wrong, and this is a common mistake that people make. I wanted to show that to you. Here, to isolate the variable, I don't need to add, I need to subtract. Let me change colors on you very quickly. I need to subtract 324 from both sides. Let's bring it down over here in brown. 6724, subtraction, 324. 6400, and if I find the root of 6400, that is 80, exactly. Woo! Okay, so check out, here's how I knew this was wrong. If x was 84, that can't be the leg, right? The two legs have to be shorter than the hypotenuse. So if that ever happens to you, and you're solving for a leg, and you get a leg that's longer than the hypotenuse, you did something wrong. Go back through your work, and that's why we show all the steps. If you don't show those steps, you're not going to have any idea where you made a mistake. I knew 84 wasn't right. This is a common mistake that people make here, is they keep adding instead of subtracting. And here we have in brown the correct solution. Okay. Woo! Catch those mistakes. Don't just celebrate when you're done. Make sure you're really done. All right, finally, a missing hypotenuse. Seventeen is squared. Two eighty nine plus two eighty nine. This time we're adding because I'm missing the hypotenuse. What is the root of 578? You learned that in second grade, right? I'm just joking. Either I was gone that day too. C is about 24. Okay, 24. Makes sense because it's longer than both of the legs. Okay, and finally down at the bottom here, let's run this test. There's a leg, hypotenuse leg. You might recognize this problem from uh, when I taught the lesson a few minutes ago. So we know this will be true. It's good to practice a couple of times on something where you already know the answer. Because then that lets you get used to using this process and it lets you trust the process. Then you feel better when you don't know the answer, like this one. So this one is true. It's a right triangle. Okay, This one, there's a leg, leg, hypotenuse, which is always the longest one, right? Will these three numbers make a right triangle? I think that's 225. Is it? Yes. Yes, this one is also a right triangle because these two things are equal. 
Let's do this one. Here's a leg, there's a hypotenuse, there's a leg. The two shortest ones are the legs, they go on the left side. Just think of leg and left if you always try to remember what goes where. They both start with the same two letters. That's 196. And I think that's 441. Well, we can kind of tell this isn't going to work out. 260. Last time I checked, 260 does not equal 441. That's why they look different and all that. So this is not a right triangle. And that's how you use the Pythagorean theorem as a test or a proof for right triangles. All right, that was a crash course lesson. Lots of stuff in a very short time. I hope it worked out for you. Uh, please leave a comment or send me an email if you had any questions. And of course, download all those Mega Math songs. Help the local economy. All right, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.